So this is a BMW R1250 GS Rally. You probably know that, pretty popular bike, and it's kind of the bike that the internet loves to hate. Mainly because out of the adventure bike world, the GS has been top of the pile for so long, it's getting a bit boring now. We're sick of seeing reviews where you test everything else and go, <laughs> yep, the GS is still the best one. I I'm in the same boat. I ride all of them, ridden all the adventure bikes. There's some that do certain things better. There's some that excite me more. There's some that are better on road but for an all-round adventure bike for travel, touring, fast road riding, off-road riding. <sighs> Unfortunately, the GS is hard to beat. Now, it occurred to me that since I went on the launch of the GS Rally ugh, a million years ago when it was the 1200 GS, we've never actually featured them much on Bike World. I've just spent two weeks with Neil up at the NEC Bike Show. Neil was riding a GS the whole time. I was talking about it on a microphone talkie stick. It occurred to me, yeah, it's about time we brought a GS down to Wales he gave it a proper thrashing on our favourite lanes just to kind of test the hype against our normal terrain that we put all the other bikes through. So today, R1250 GS Rally. Yep, it's really good. Yep, everyone wants to hate it. We're going to send it off some jumps and get it muddy. These videos only happen because of the support and help from our sponsors. Support the companies that support us. So what do we already know about the R1250 GS Rally? Well, it's not the lightest adventure bike, it's not the cheapest, and it's not got the most horsepower. But somehow, it puts what it does have together in a package that makes it really easy for novice riders to ride, both on and off-road, and actually still have enough excitement and enough pop and zing about it that super experienced riders get on them and generally find them really enjoyable to ride. Big differences between most motorcycles, the great big strikingly obvious one, that gigantic engine poking out the sides. Bit of a weird design, has a real character to it, and actually what it does do is allow room for the telelever front suspension. If you don't know what telelever front suspension is, imagine the rear swinging arm with a shock. It's kind of the same thing at the front. You've still got a set of forks, but all the damping and spring duties are done with a swinging arm and a shock absorber, which sit kind of underneath the front of the tank where your cylinder heads would normally lie. Now that telelever setup does make it handle differently to a conventional bike. The main benefit is a degree of anti-dive. So when you brake, the fork doesn't compress and you don't change the geometry of the bike. In real world terms, it just makes it a lot easier to ride smoothly and consistently, particularly with a pillion, particularly loaded up with luggage. And in road riding situations, I actually think it's quite a good advantage. On the track, when you're trying to bury the front tire into a turn and get it to steer into an apex, yeah, <laughs> give me a regular fork every time. But certainly for road riding, the telelever does work pretty well. Now being a brand new 1250 GS Rally, everything electronic on it you can possibly imagine, it's got it. So it's got electronic suspension, it's got cruise control, it's got traction control, it's got ABS, it's got the SOS feature, so if you drop the bike, it'll phone your mum, tell her to come pick you up, keyless ignition, TFT dash, nav, and by and far and away, the most important feature, heated handlebar grips. Hey, we're in the UK, what do you expect? Right, corners, let's go. <laughs> ah, this thing's really good. I've done a squillion miles on these off-road, but today I've been riding on actually really road bias tires and it surprised me, it just copes so well with everything you throw at it. They're a damn good bike. There's a reason they're so popular. It's a great road bike, a great touring bike. It parties with the best of them in the dirt and it costs it's the novice. It really is all things to all riders. Damn, they're good. So before this turns into a boxer gush fest, um, I, there are a couple of things that aren't brilliant about them. Now, the cylinders, which, again, stop it falling over so far when you do drop it, they do get in the way. They clout stumps, they clout rocks. You can't get tight to banks when you want to get through things. If you're trying to walk the bike through something, you're constantly having cylinder heads smashing you in the shin. So, 
that's not perfect. Definitely, if you're trying to ride it fast on gravel, I felt like I had more feel and confidence in the front end of the KTM 1290 Adventure R. Not just because of the tires we're using, but maybe it's just what I'm used to. You're used to a fork diving, so when you've got one that doesn't, it does feel that when the front tucks on this, it happens very quickly. I'm, I'm splitting hairs here. The biggest reason people won't buy a GS is because they either don't want one or they can't afford one. Now, the first answer, no problem. The second one, I get your point. This really is a 17,000 pound motorcycle. The absolute base model 1250 with nothing on is 13.7, but I don't think any of them leave the showroom like that. So in all in, this particular one I'm sat on, 17 or so grand, it's a lot of money to spend on a bike if you're then intending to do what we've done today on it. Plow through mud and trees and rocks and roots. On top of that, not everyone's got 17 grand to spend on a motorcycle, regardless of finance or anything else. There are a couple of options though, and I've brought them along today just to have a little head to head and see what the disadvantage is if you can't afford to buy a brand new one. So we have the 2012 R1200 GS Adventure and a 2002 R1150 GS Adventure. Our alternatives. So first up, we've got the 2012 R1200 GS Adventure. The Adventure is the one with the big tank, the more bodywork and the taller suspension. In 2012, this was it. This was the king. This was the fanciest GS money could buy. Properly tricked bit of kit back then. Looks pretty dated now. And definitely when you start looking around it, it's nowhere near as clean and well finished as the new ones. They've refined this setup. They've refined this engine, this bike to the point where there's not cables and wires stuck out all over the place. That said, it's a lovely purring air-cooled 1200 boxer motor. I really enjoyed riding these when they first came out. It was one of the first GSs I spent time on. So always got a soft spot for these. Now, a rough, 80,000 mile well used one of these can be had for under five grand just realistically you're looking between five and ten this one was 15,000 miles when we got it and it's got yeah minor marks pretty much immaculate and it was eight grand so gives you an idea of roughly where a good clean one can be had for at this end of the spectrum what we've got here is the scumbag department this is <laughs> this is firmly where i belong i won't lie this one's mine. I've had this for ages. It is an 1150 GS Adventure from 2002. No ABS, no traction, no servo brakes. It barely runs. <laughs> it's a proper old workhorse, this one. These 1150 GSAs were the ones in that original Ewan and Charlie film that kind of kick-started the whole adventure bike segment all over again. For that reason, the tidier ones of these have gone up a little bit in price. A clean low mileage one, five and a half, six grand now. A ratty, <laughs> beaten up one with dents in the tank and 60 odd thousand miles, you can get them for closer to the two and a half, two and a half, three grand. It's actually still a lot of bite for the money. It's 20 years removed from the 1250 down there. That's a lot of development, a lot of technology. On paper, this thing is eclipsed by the new bike, but when you can't afford 17 grand, I'm going to say this is a hell of a lot of fun for the money. And actually surprisingly good. What's going to be interesting today is riding it back to back with the brand new one on the same terrain on off-road. This one's got a slight advantage because it's got knobbly tires on it but in all honesty it needs all the help it can get. Right let's get these old classics thrashed covered in mud and suitably destroyed before we run out of daylight. <laughs> Finished, we're done, sadly. <laughs> I don't want to be done, I'm having too much fun. No, we've proved again, yep, we knew it, the 1250GS, a very capable motorcycle. Really, really good fun off-road. Important to caveat, there's always a limit. There's always a point where they stop being fun off-road and that's usually when you start dropping them, getting stuck, pushing and pulling. You know, there's no hiding the fact that all of these adventure bikes are a quarter of a ton near an S. With that in mind, these are best ridden kind of within your ability. If your ability level with off-road is zero, taking one of these and charging down a gnarly green lane, it's kind of fun if you're a bit sadistic, but you quickly rack up a big repair bill and a lot of lot of lifting and pushing and pulling. So if you've got a little bit of off-road ability, taking and riding one of these on gravel tracks is super fun and really, really rewarding. Out of all of the big adventure bikes, I still maintain I think the 1250GS is the easiest to get on with for a novice. The clutch, the low center of gravity, the way it rides and delivers such smooth power, that stuff does still stand out in this class. We've got a few new bikes in the market that are heading our way, so it'll be interesting to see if it can keep that title. But from that point of view, 
it's a very, very easy and forgiving bike to ride. As well as our beautiful flagship Fancy Pants 17 Grand Rally here, it was really interesting riding the two other bikes. What I like the most is riding everything from the 1150 all the way through to this. They still keep that same kind of family vibe, family resemblance. They still, you could be blindfolded and immediately know just by hearing it ride past, just by feeling the vibrations, you know you're on a Boxer Engine GS. They've got that kind of family resemblance really, really well. Is this one five times better than the early 1150? <laughs> <laughs> it probably is actually, I, I have to say. I'm not quite sure it's three times better than the 1200. It's definitely considerably better than the 1200 adventure we've got here, but the gap narrows. You can feel that refinement in 20 years, the same basic flavor, but the bikes just got better and better and better. From the 1150 to the 1200 is actually quite a big step. From the 1200 to the 1250, it's a step, but it's not so pronounced. This latest 1250, is kind of the pinnacle at the moment. The new shift cam motor with the extra horsepower off-road, yeah, it's not really made a great deal of difference to me from the 1200 liquid cooled, but on-road, the overtaking power, the extra horsepower when you're luggaged and pillioned up, oh, it's, it's a godsend. And until you've tried it, you don't think you need it, and then you, tr then you try it and it's really hard to go backwards in horsepower again. The suite of electronics on these things, Again, off-road, actually having proper enduro developed ABS has been brilliant, especially today, because we've been on non-off-road tires. We're on a sort of 70-30 road bias tire. Riding fast laps around that rallycross circuit, it gave me so much faith to pull the front brake hard, knowing that if I did overstep the mark, I've got some ABS there that's designed to work off-road that's gonna keep me safe. That is by far and away for me the best innovation they've put on a GS since the 1150. The second most important electronic thing on them, heated handlebar grips <laughs> and the ones on the 1150 have broken because it's 20 years old. That's probably going to be the main point to summarize here. If you can afford a brand new bike, it's great. You haven't got the hassle of fixing them. You haven't got the hassle of problems. Anything that does go wrong, just take it back to the dealer. They have to sort it under warranty and you get the very best in performance and technology. There's always an argument that that technology is taken away from the riding experience a bit, but you know what, after buzzing around today, I don't think that's the case. I'd had just as much fun riding this as I did on the old bikes. And actually the extra horsepower and extra performance let me do more on this than I would, than I would on either of the other two. Which one would I ride away right now? <laughs> well, well, sadly for me, <laughs> I've got no choice. I've got to take the 1150 on, it's mine. <laughs> and now I've got to fix the starter motor and the heated grips and, uh, and the drive shaft mount on the back and the <laughs> old bikes. <laughs>